In today's episode, I want to talk about tools, specifically the tools that you might want to consider taking with you on a ride so that you're prepared to fix most mechanicals and giving yourself the best chance of always making it home so you don't have to awkwardly call your father-in-law to come and pick you up. Thanks, Colin. I've seen a lot of videos out there talking about the essential bike tools to have at home, but I've not seen a lot of content about the kinds of tools that you should take with you on a ride where weight and size are a little bit more important. So today I want to try and answer that question. What is the ultimate on-bike tool carry? And are there potentially a few hacks to make your on-bike carry as light but as functional as possible? As some of you will know who watched my last video, I recently had a pretty major mechanical out on a gravel track in the middle of Aberfoyle. I didn't have the right tool with me and so I couldn't make the bike rideable, which was frustrating. There was no phone signal, which left the prospect of a three hour walk back to the car. Luckily, that's not what happened. So go and watch the video. I'll link it around here to see what did happen. But that scenario prompted me to re-evaluate my toolkit, hopefully avoiding this happening in the future. And so I wanted to share with you where I'd landed, what my ultimate toolkit is now, and hopefully you'll find it useful. So firstly, I think it's important to consider that not every ride is the same. A 30 kilometer spin from home or a 250 kilometer ride through the secluded Scottish Highlands probably require different approaches to tooling. So that's why I've decided to break this ultimate kit into two smaller kits, the minimalist kit and the pro activist kit. This way, before each ride, I can choose which level of toolkit that I think is right based on the implications of not being able to fix my bike and having to try to get home. Okay, so let's start with the minimalist toolkit. This is the smallest, lightest toolkit that I'll carry. It's mainly for use on road riding or rides that are less than 100 kilometers, where I want to ride fast and I don't really want to carry that much additional weight. But for a small and lightweight kit, it's pretty functional and it'll probably sort out the majority of mechanicals, things like bike adjustment, puncture repairs, chain fixes and maintenance, or tightening things that might have come loose. So what's in the kit? Firstly, we've got a pump. Now, I'm using the Lazine Pocket Drive, which is lightweight, really small, it's less than 140 millimeters long, so it's really easy to pack. And it has the option for both Presta and Schrader valves with this little extension tube that pops out. It weighs in at 72.6 grams, so pretty light, not the lightest out there, but this option works well for me at a given price point. Secondly, I've got a small multi-tool. Now, again, this one is from Lazine. I really do like this stuff which is why it features in a few of these tools. This has a bunch of different hex Allen keys on there. It's got a torque star, it's got a Phillips head, and it's really quite small and lightweight. If you wanted to go even more minimalist, then you could just use maybe like a four or five mil hex, depending on the different sizes that you need for your bike. Then I've got patches. Patches are cool, eh? That's right, Timmy. These are small self-adhesive patches from Park Tool and they're great for just making quick repairs to like a hole in an inner tube in the quickest and easiest way. Next one, I've got a valve extender. This one is from Vittoria and it's useful for when I'm riding with my deeper wheels on my road bike. Sometimes if you're out and you've had an issue, you may be able to get your hands on a spare inner tube if you've not had one with you, but it's very rare that you'll get a long valve one that works for wheels that have deeper sections. So I just carry this tiny little valve extender with me that only weighs like three grams. And it just means that I can turn any sort of inner tube into an inner tube that's gonna work with my wheels. Next, I've got two tire levers. Now you could probably get away with one if you wanted to, depending on how tight your tires are. But with these Continental GP5000s that I'm using on my bike, I need at least two <laughs> to get those tires on and off. So that's why I carry two. Then finally, the newest addition to my tool set is this Lazine chain quick link splitter tool. Now, if I'd had this on my ride with me last week, I would have been able to repair the bike, make it rideable, and I would have got home, or maybe even completed the ride. So this is a lovely little tool with lots of hidden features. It's got a quick link or a master link splitter. It's got a valve core tool, a bottle opener, a rotor tuning. Not sure if I use that bit. But most importantly, it's got a really nicely designed chain splitter tool where you unscrew sort of one of the parts and then screw it back onto the top, which gives you really nice leverage, but the tool is still packed away really neatly and it's really small actually. 
There's also a space on the back for two quick links with these magnets to keep the whole thing together. It's really lovely and it only weighs in at 62 grams, which is pretty good, I have to say. If you're running tubeless or if I'm going out on my gravel bike, which is tubeless, then I would also carry a tubeless repair kit. I've got this kit from Muckoff and in there it includes a plug tool and some of those small worms plug things. Um, doesn't weigh very much, like 17 grams or something like that, but I would add that into the toolkit if I was riding tubeless. And then usually I'll wrap all of this in an intentionally large amount of electrical tape, which keeps it neat and tidy, but it also means that I have a little bit of extra tape, which can always come in handy. And then this kit, I usually just throw in my jersey pocket. It's really small, doesn't take up that much space, and it just means you don't have to faff around with any bags or anything like that. And this kit weighs in at 231.8 grams, which I feel like is not bad. It could definitely be lighter, but I'm pretty happy with that. And then if you added the tubeless repair in there, it would be 248 grams. It could probably be stripped down further, but I feel like that's a good minimalist baseline kit to take out with you on most rides. Okay, moving on to the second kit. I'm calling this the Proactivist. So this is when you wanna be slightly more prepared, you wanna have a slightly more robust toolkit, and you don't mind maybe carrying a little bit of extra weight. Super useful for those longer rides, going further, maybe going off grid a little bit, or even those multi-day bikepacking trips where you wanna make sure that you can definitely repair your bike. This kit should probably be able to save you from the majority of mechanicals. And I reckon could get you back on the road from almost anything outside of maybe a big crash. Okay, so this kit contains everything from the minimalist kit plus a few extras. Firstly, I've got a replacement inner tube and also I've got a valve extender on that tube as well. Patches will often be good enough to repair a puncture so that you can get home. But for those longer rides, it might be useful to carry a spare inner tube. And on those longer rides, like multi-day rides or really long rides, maybe you should carry a couple of these. So this tube here I've got is a latex tube from Vittoria. If you're interested about what I think about latex tubes, then you should check out this other video. But if you wanted to do an even more lightweight or minimalist kit, you could use something like this. Now this is an inner tube from Tubalito. Yep, they're a little bit more expensive but they're super light, super small, and really easy to pack. I would also carry gloves. They're super handy to avoid just getting your hands and clothes covered in bike oil, which has happened to me a couple of times. And you can also use these underneath winter gloves, maybe if you get really cold hands out on a ride, just to give you a little bit more warmth. Cable ties are always a great sort of get out of jail card to have with you. You can use them for a variety of things and in that sort of last minute attempt to get your bike rideable again, these will probably come in handy. It's also useful to carry a spare mech hanger in this kit. Now these are bike dependent, so make sure you get the one that's right for your bike. But these are designed to break in the event of an impact to save like the rear mech and the drivetrain from damage. So sometimes if you had a crash or the, you dropped the bike, you could find that your mech is broken, but with a replacement mech, everything should be fine to get the bike rideable again. And then finally, you might wanna also consider putting some spare bolts and stuff like that in this kit, just like a couple of extra little bits and the off chance that you break something or you need a replacement out on the road. And then for this kit, I'll usually wrap it all up in a tool wrap. It's like an under saddle tool wrap thing. Um, it's quite heavy, this pack, but it was pretty cheap and it's got some nice pockets and it does the job fairly well. And the good thing is that I can even get the small pump in there as well. So I can get literally everything in that small pack. And for this complete tool kit with the minimalist kit plus all of these additions, it comes in at 413.6 grams, which some might say is heavy and you're definitely not gonna wanna take that if you're racing or if you're trying to get KOMs. But if you're out for a long day or a couple of days and you want a kit that's gonna save you from most mechanicals, then under 500 grams, I think is pretty good. Well, that's my current revised approach to on-bike tooling. I'm sure I might add or remove things over time, but hopefully you found that useful, or if you're thinking about building this kit from scratch, this might be a really good place for you to start. But I'd love to hear what you think. Are there tools that I've missed? Are there things that you carry that I've not mentioned? Or do you have an even better, lighter, more robust toolkit than me? Let me know down in the comments below. I'm sure everybody else watching would love to hear your points. So give this video a like. I'll see you in the next one.